Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. So a couple weeks ago, I ran into a problem. I dropped this camera and broke, unfortunately, the lens filter yes. uh, on the lens. The lens ended up being okay. And I brought the lens and the filter, broken filter, to Adam, who, uh, who helped me take it off by taking the filter to a bandsaw. What's the horror of the internet? Oh my <laughs> god, it was the horror of me standing in that room. But before we actually took it to the bandsaw, Adam tried using this tool that you found online. Lens wrench. The lens wrench, yeah. and I don't think we ended up using it properly. And uh, many of you out there pointed out that we actually did not use it properly. One of those people was you, Sean. I, I did, yes. And that's because <laughs> in a previous life, it turns out Sean repaired cameras and lenses mm -hmm. at NYU. Yeah, I was the uh, repair tech for NYU Film and TV for a long time, and so I fixed a lot of broken lenses, a lot. Because <laughs> students love to you know, drop lenses. And having since moved to San Francisco, you actually brought a bunch of those tools uh, yeah. with you to repair lenses. So I thought it'd be fun today to go over some of those tools that you use yeah. in your job. Tools and techniques. And techniques and tips for how to fix and uh, maybe repair mm -hmm. a broken lens filter. Yeah, so we'll, we'll show you some tricks. Let's go check it out. Okay, Sean, so what's the first thing you would do for fixing a lens filter like this yeah. guy? Sure, so the one you guys, so um, you guys definitely getting the any loose glass out is always a good step. Um, sometimes you get like that where it literally is just all held into place and there's not anything you can do. That typically happens more with elements versus fil filaments, or filaments, uh, filters though. Uh, so the first thing that I usually do, so let's say we had a filter on this lens that was stuck. Um, I actually don't have one on there. I get a nice grippy rubber mat and the very first thing you do is put it down there and just turn, push down and turn mm. because you're putting even pressure over the whole thing and a lot of the times that can work, okay? Right. But what will happen with the filters is all these little filters have really, really fine threads on them. And let's say your filter was even a little bit loose. When it hits, it'll misalign or miss or it'll cross thread the, the uh, threads. And then no matter how much you turn it, it's not gonna go anywhere. So the other thing I would do is with the filter on there, I would take a hammer and very gently go around the outside and tap it down. So if it is a little bit misaligned, sometimes it'll just snap that back in place. And then I would try the rubber mat again and see if that will get it. Is All there right? a specific type of rubber mat that you would use? Um, I don't. I have a particular McMaster car one that I like. This is not the one, this is just an example, but it's just really soft and really grippy. Um, and I, that's, I just order that one all the time. I can, I can throw that post up if somebody wants it, but um, that's the very, very first thing that I do. And often between the rubber mat and the gripping and tapping it down again, a lot of the times I can get it going. Okay, now if it's really, really mangled, um, where it's like really badly dented, like this is just mangled to all heck, um, then you're gonna have a problem. So you guys were using the lens wrench, right? So th this is actually the one that I use for years and yours is much, much nicer. <laughs> I mean, it's no. the same concept. Yeah. It has same idea. there, you can expand yeah. it. Yeah, so there's a big side and a little side. And so I think at one point what you guys were doing is you had it locked into place and you were trying to turn with mm -hmm. it. Um, what you actually want to do is, w let's say our dent is on uh, the far side here, right? Uh, we want to put the, the side that has the crank on that side. And this one's nice because you can just slide it by hand and then tighten it up. All right. So I got it locked. The dent is over here and we have this locked into place. And then actually what you typically do is take a hammer and you give it a few little taps because cranking this down is often not gonna get it bent back in the shape properly or you'll overextend and you'll actually end up bending it out too much the wrong way. Yeah, we're so afraid we're gonna make it Usually what I would do with the lens wrench is you, you make it snug, then you take a hammer on the opposite side of where the dent is, you give it a few little taps. Then you tighten it up a little bit more tap again, and you just keep doing that until you get it back into place. And that gives you more control versus just cranking down on this and torquing it too much. Um, and sometimes that will then bend things in the place where you can get it off. More often than not, what you actually use this for is after you get the filter off, 
if you ever want to put a filter on this lens again, you got to get this back round. Mm -hmm. And that's what you usually use this for. I actually didn't use it to get filters off that often because it very seldom worked. Um, it's realigning. Yeah, so if lens. all of this has failed, so the rubber mat didn't work, tapping it down didn't work, the lens wrench didn't work, then you totally do get into the territory that you and Adam were in where you're going to cut or manhandle this off. And a lot of times I would just use a uh, 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 hacksaw by hand. Um, I've used a Dremel before. That's a little scary because if you're not careful and you and you slip and you hit the lens itself, that's a problem. Um, uh, I've never used the bandsaw, but that was totally viable. And the way Adam did it was he basically was using what we call spanners, which are all these little tools, which are, have either blades or points and they come in a variety of sizes for different lenses. And a lot of times, these filters will have these little notches in the front. So here and here, we have these square notches that the spanner would fit in, and you use that to turn the ring. So that's kind of what you guys are recreating. Yeah, I can see that right here. Yeah. Notch now, right there and right there. Unfortunately, my lens and my filter didn't have yeah, those Yeah, so what I would do, the risk you run with doing that, the way you guys did it, is you run the risk of messing up the threads on your lens. It's almost like stripping it. <clears throat> yeah, because a lot of times these are plastic housings on the front now, and it's really, really easy to screw those up. And if you mess up those threads, then you're not gonna get another filter back on, or it's gonna jam instantly when you do put it on. Mm. So rather than cutting the notches and using the torque, what I would usually do is cut one notch and then use a pair of pliers to grab that filter. So let's use your damage run. So I would cut one notch almost the whole way through. I would grab this on the edge and just twist this in to where you kind of get the one side of the filter collapsed in. And once you get that started, you can almost kind of peel the filter away from the inside. At that point, you're bending the metal, bending the, breaking the plastic, you're yeah. stretching it beyond the filter. The thing you want to avoid is breaking the filter that's on the lens itself. Right. And that's, if I'm using a metal brass filter, bending that is fine, but this can often be plastic yeah. is what you're saying. And a lot of times, so, uh, and then the filters, they'll have a retaining ring that holds in the piece of glass. Usually they're on the front. You actually have a really nice fancy filter and they've put it on the back and actually has no keying on it, which is interesting. Um, so uh, a lot of times the you can either uh, also peel out that retaining ring separately or cut it off separately and get it out of the way and it will it'll give you more access to the filter ring itself. So that's a lot a lot of times what I would do is I would just cut one notch and then manhandle it with the pliers, which sounds terrifying. And often when I had I had a little uh, I, had, I, I would often clean lenses with chamois, uh, and I would cut a little piece of chamois out that I'd lay over the lens to just protect it from slips and, and filings and stuff like that. So um, that was the extreme situation where like there is no way else to get it out. Um, there are a few other tools like these guys, which are len lens ring tools, and uh, you can get these in all different sizes. And you can get them, I, these are hollow ones, but you can also get them uh, as solid gum rubber. And what they're meant to do is, uh, uh, let's say there is a, a filter ring on this, it gives you even coverage and grip, kind of like what we're doing for this, but let's say that the ring is inset where you can't do this. So you can reach down in there with this guy and turn it so you'd pick the right size that fit down in there, like that, and push and turn. And it gives you even grippage over the whole ring and it's more likely to actually break it loose. And you can flip these around and use the other size for different sizes. And uh, I'd say for big rings like this, the solid ones are better, but this is a nice cheap one that you can get that covers a lot of different end elements and stuff. Um, and then, this, like I said, the spanners are good for tightening up this kind of stuff. Or if you have like, uh, this one has pegs in it. So you'd use the pin one on either side of this, and then you can turn this and tighten it or loosen it. That gives you a lot of torque, it's yeah. a specialized tool, but not every lens Yeah, and um, so that, doing those things would often get it out. Now, the problem you run into is then, let's say you, you get the filter out and your threads are messed up, so maybe the filter is just jammed. That happens a lot, yeah. where the filter's not dropped or anything, it's just stuck on the lens. So you get it all off, it seems to be okay, but maybe the threads are a little messed up. That's when you can get, uh, this is a thread restoring file. Wow. And wow. so this has threads, uh, th thread sizes for all different kinds of bolts and stuff. So let's say the threads are messed up on this lens hood and we wanted to fix them up. So you'd find the thread 
file that matches the spacing on your threads. And literally you just very gently run this back and forth along and, and it will eventually clean up the threads for you. And you can use that carefully on the inside as well. You just gotta make sure you pick the right one that matches your threads. And that's a good way to fix up damaged threads. Uh, and then to keep that from doing that, a lot of times what I would do is I would rub a little graphite along the threads when I put it back in, which can help to keep it from jamming again. And uh, my final tip is Sometimes you get the filters that are like, you'll jiggle them around and you can feel the glasses rattling around in there. And that's usually just the retaining ring has got uh, come loose. Now you may not have the, the real, you know, the right spanners like these guys that you'd put in the little holes or slots to tighten it up. So sometimes what you can do is if it's a slot one, you can take a little tiny screwdriver and put it on one side and just kind of turn it clockwise. Or if it's the peg one like, like this, you can sometimes maybe take a, a little tiny screwdriver, like a jeweler screwdriver or even an ice pick and put it down in there and just kind of give it a little turn and tighten that back up. It actually tightens the retaining ring The retaining ring for the glass. the glass, yeah. Right. Now, and the final thing, we we should talk about is there was some discussion is whether you should even use clear filters right because some people are saying it's just causing more problems when it gets damaged and it you know, degrades the, the quality like the image and stuff and typically I wouldn't use UV filters because my understanding is with digital it UV does not affect it like it does film like like analog film so usually I would just get a, a clear optical filter and if you're getting a nice one like you have or a Tiffin or something like that that's going to be optically clear it's not going to really degrade your image. Mm -hmm. um, there are some trade-offs. I have found under very unique lighting circumstances with a filter on the front, I get light that bounces between the front element and that and you can get a double image. So sometimes I have, I've had to take filters off to prevent that. Um, and then the other problem, but, but the other thing that, that I find is that the filters have saved lenses more often than not. This is a good example. This had no filter on it and it has a metal housing, which a lot of high-end lenses do. So if you hit the metal housing on this, it just makes an arrowhead that goes right into the glass and shatters it just like it did here. Uh, versus if we had a filter on the front, it's gonna mess up the filter instead, you know? Um, and some people were saying, use lens hoods. Yeah, and, and that's fine too, but you know, you can, with the plastic housings, it, it, I find that the metal filters can save them more often than not. And then if you get like thrown rocks, sparks, fake blood, like seawater, all the things that I've seen over the years, the clear filter really does help and it will you know, save your lens. The bigger problem you run into with dropping this, uh, these type of lenses, particularly ones that have autofocus, you're more likely to damage the focus motors or the alignment or focus of the lens. So I always make sure that I go through a check procedure when I have a drop lens to check the focal distance and make sure that it's zooming properly and focusing properly. Yeah. So with, with those tips, you know, uh, you might be able to fix up your own gear. Um, there's a site that I get a lot of stuff on called Micro Tools. Uh, we'll put the link in the comments. It has a lot of uh, lens and, oddly enough, watch parts. And of all these components, these repair tools, uh, what's the most basic one, the one you find most reliable? Is it rubber mat? <laughs> that is uh, the easiest, cheapest by far to start with. Um, the lens wrench, like I said, can help round things out. These, if you get a bigger set um, for that, that can work, and then you can also pick up a pair of bladed and pointed spanners for really cheap. I love the spanners. Yeah. They're very cool, give you that torque, mm -hmm. and they're nicely adjustable. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for running us through some of your techniques and tools for lens repair. Of course, the best, the best, uh, <laughs> the best defense is offense. Yeah. Just never get into a situation where you're gonna need to repair. Oh yeah, never do lenses. that. Yeah. Just yeah. be more careful. That's all I'm looking forward to doing in the future. Thanks, Sean. Yep. <laughs>